This video will change your life forever. Recognize, when people are feeling, whether it's anger or fear or grief and sadness, they hold their body in a way in which the outward world recognizes as an external representation of that internal emotional state. This relationship between what we feel in our bodies and how we hold our bodies in space goes by many different names. I'll be referring to it today as psychosomatics. In one of the most potent and powerful mappings of our psychosomatic physical to emotional mental connection, comes from this wonderful book here, Body Mind by Ken Deitchwald. In this book, Ken goes into extreme detail on how each part of our body has specific archetypical emotional attributes and traits. And today we're just gonna be beginning to explore that map. This is the major body psychosomatic splits. The first way we're gonna begin dividing the body to better understand it is between our upper and lower half. Our lower half of our body is everything from the hips and below, and our upper half is everything above. Now, if we just look at it functionally first, we can recognize that our lower half of our body is distinctly responsible for supporting us. It's what carries us through the world. It is our connection to the ground, so it has a sense of groundedness. While our upper half of our body is what we use to interact and engage and create. It, it can, has our hands, it has our, our face. It is the part of ourself more responsible with interaction. Our lower half has a sense of stability to it, a sense of groundedness and connection, whereas our upper half is, is more interpersonal, more relational. Our lower half tends to be more concerned with privacy. There's a reason that we cover our, our genitals, whereas our upper half is more open and expressive. And the way that we balance these two energies together is one of the ways we can bring unison and unification to our being. But this is only the beginning. The next split is one that's really commonly recognized, but I find not as deeply understood as it could be. And this is that division between our left side of our body and our right side. Now this is usually described as our left side being feminine and our right side being masculine. But why is that? It's because our brain is split into two hemispheres, where our right side controls majority of the left side of our body and our left side controls majority of the right side of our body. Now this is an oversimplification. The reality is it's one interconnected network that all meshes together, but there is a distinction. And scientists have come to very clearly understand that our left hemisphere of our brain is responsible for more of our analytical, logical, problem-solving, mathematical mental functions. So it makes sense that the side of our brain that is more linear and processing that connects to our right side might manifest as a more masculine sort of energetic flavoring to it. Whereas our right side, which is more concerned with creativity and interpersonal relationship and controls our left side of our body, may have a more feminine, receptive, softening yin energy to it. It is a yin and a yang. And again, this is all interconnected, but there is scientific validation for why people consider our left side more feminine and our right side more masculine, our left side more yin and our right side more yang. Our front side of ourself is the part that we more identify with, right? When you look in a mirror, your front is what you see. Our front side is what we present to the world. So it, it is deeply tied into our identity. It's deeply tied into our conscious understanding of ourself, where we don't see our backside as often. And because of that, it tends to become a storehouse for the more unconscious, not recognized aspects of ourself. So, whereas our front, you know, we wear this mask of our face that we show to the world, our back might hide the pain that we don't show or that we don't even recognize within ourselves. So our front side is more conscious and our back side is more unconscious. In the Western world, it's extremely common for us to divide the body from the head down. 
So everything from the head and above is kind of what we consider to be our mind, our thinking self. And while that's not true, there actually is an interconnected relationship between it all. Everything from our shoulders and below does have a more private quality. Well, everything from our head and above does have a more mental sort of flavor to it. It's considered where our reason resides, right? This is our more culturally aware, socially interactive aspect of our energetic psychosomatic connection where everything from the torso and below has a more animalistic quality to it. It's like our reason, our civilization, it's, it's, it's from the neck up, whereas everything from the shoulders down is more primal. That's one way to understand this division. And lastly, we can divide ourselves from our core to our limbs, from our torso to our legs and arms. This torso, this core of ourself, is more connected to the core of our being, who we truly are at our center. It makes sense, right? Whereas our arms and legs are more of an extension of that core inner truth. They are the ways in which that centered self begins to expand and grow as it interacts with the world through our limbs. And we can start to tie these various mappings together and use it as an almost diagnostic system to better understand what's showing up inside of ourselves psychosomatically. So we're feeling something in our, our front side of our belly, you know, it's like it's deep in the core of ourself and it's on the right side. It might be connected to the masculine. It's it's in the front so it's related to our conscious understanding of ourself it's below the head so it's more connected to our primal animalistic nature laying these maps on top of each other really allows you to kind of diagnose and understand these physical components from their psychosomatic perspectives they're not scientific fact they are experiential archetypical repeating patterns so they have a deep layer of truth to them but they're unique to each individual. And there's no way to fully judge somebody just by looking at their individual parts. The only way to truly know a person is in their wholeness, in the way that all of these unique divisions come together as one. There is an opportunity to better understand ourselves by looking at ourselves through these different lenses and seeing these different parts we may better get to know what's underneath the surface, what we haven't seen, so that we can come together again, more whole, more aware of ourselves. Go forward and change the world.